videos. Uh, in the part two video, I showed you this demo file. And in this demo file, I was uh, showing you the a layout here, this exact same layout as a matter of fact, that on the right hand side just had a simple text field and on the left hand side had a web viewer. And as you can see, the web viewer is set up to display the contents of the text field. Pretty simple stuff. Um, and in the previous video, we showed how if you use a data URL, you can then display any HTML text or embedded text of any kind uh, to be able to do things like uh, draw images in CSS or display images that are being hosted on a server somewhere or even integrate JavaScript uh, to allow your users to be able to interact with the web viewer and even run FileMaker scripts. So now I just wanted to show you sort of a continuation of that same concept and here what I've done instead of having just one text field on the right hand side uh, and then having the web viewer display just the one text field. What I've done is broken up the code field into, in this case, three different codes. So you see here that what the web viewer is actually doing, it's just concatenating three different fields. That's this text field, the middle text field, and the bottom text field. So if we look at that in browse mode, we see that it's just simply the data URL, some header HTML, and then we see the closing tags here. But the concept here now is that we can use the calculation engine, uh, more specifically the calculation engine that the web viewer is using, uh, to allow the user to interact with this information. So, for example, I can uh, type in hello demo as the user, and it'll then display that uh, text in the web viewer on the right hand side. This goes even further. For example here, if you recall from the first demo, we had this uh, pinkish box with the words box one in it. Uh, now, instead of just having the full code in one big field, I can actually have a concatenation of a series of different fields, some of them being user driven and some of them just being the, the code in the background. Of course, the user doesn't need to see this code. They'll just see fields like this and I can then manipulate the position of the box I can even manipulate the size of the box if I'd like to. And I can manip manipulate the color of the box as well. There you see I've just changed the color. I can make this a drop down if I'd like to. And even the uh, text that we see. And for lack of more creative things. So you see that also. Now, in addition, we've also made it so that um, we can pick from the different images that the user can see. So let's say we've got all these different images. What I'm doing here is just entering in different record IDs. So the idea here, again, it wouldn't be so much as the user actually typing in the record ID, but maybe you have a drop down here or a script that's picking from a uh, portal of a bunch of container fields or something like that. Uh, the idea here is that not only is it user driven, but it can be driven by the data inside FileMaker fields. And the same thing is true here as well. Um, you see here that I just have three fields in this case. This is just my data URL header. And then I see I've got all my different code here that includes my JavaScript and some of the functions that I've created in JavaScript. But the key here is that I've got a third field. And in that third field, I've just copied and pasted all the JavaScript. Uh, in, in, in this case, I needed this uh, JavaScript from jQuery library called Kinetic. And Kinetic is what allows me to drag the images around on screen and move them around. And instead of having to embed all of that code into the field as we had done over here in, in the previous movie, I've decided to create what's called the resources table. And in the resources table, I've defined a bunch of fields to just contain various different pieces of code whether they be JavaScript, CSS, HTML, whatever it is. And so this way I don't have to bother the user with them having to see all this information. Of course, they don't even need to see the functions. And the idea is that I can just reference the kinetic code, as you see here in layout mode. So here's the first text field that just really contains our data URL. And here's the rest of the functions 
Uh, but in the middle is just a simple reference in the calculation engine to the field that contains the entire JavaScript for this kinetic file. I'm going to elaborate a little bit further on this in the next video, but as you see here, when we do such a thing, uh, our JavaScript, the movable images, are still uh, supported, and then of course we can run a script, uh, the script that's of course being called, as you see here down on the bottom, the report drag position script. So in the next video, I'll show you a little bit more about how we set up the different fields and embed the JavaScript and what we like to call localizing uh, the JavaScript and this HTML5 uh, JavaScript CSS combination really comes to life that way. Uh, and of course, then you don't have to be uh, dependent on external web servers either. Uh, so stay tuned to at FileMakerHTML5.com for more videos and more resources and all sorts of good stuff. Uh, on the same topic. Thanks for watching.